Hi, Dan here. Hope you're doing really well. Knowing your bass fretboard inside out, back to front is really going to help your bass playing no end. So I'm going to show you 10 tips. The first tip is to map out octaves across the bass. There are five patterns you need to know. So as using A as an example, so I'm on the A string, two across, two frets this way, two strings that way, we get an octave. Now from that note, to the fifth fret of the E string, there's another pattern. So if you think about it, so if you're on the G string and you go three frets higher, this is higher, and drop down three strings to the E string, it's another octave pattern. Now with between those two notes, there are triads, arpeggios, scales, all kinds of things. So it's a good thing to be able to link that up. So that's so far, two octave patterns. Now let's go to the fifth fret of the E string. Again, go two up, two down, same as the first one. I'm gonna count that as another pattern though. Any note on the same string, go 12 frets up. You get another octave pattern. Seven frets up on the same string, then drop to the next string. You get another octave pattern. So one, two, three, four, five. Five different octave patterns. Lots of bass lines take place in different registers of the bass. You can connect up any of these octave patterns using triads, scales, modes, etc. Next tip is to know every single scale in three positions. Here's what I mean. So I'm going to use A major as an example, fifth fret of the E string. You want to be able to play that scale and therefore the triads and arpeggios that, that lurk within that scale. You want to be able to play that off three different fingers. So starting on the second, we've got this finger pass and I'll shout out, I'm doing one finger per fret and I'm going fingers two, four, and then one, two, four, and then one, three, four. But you also want to be able to play that scale starting with your little finger. It's a little bit more of a stretch, a bit of a shift there. Just gives you that part of the bass to play in instead of just this part. So that's second finger, little finger. Also, you want to be able to play it off your first finger. That gives you a three note per string pattern. I'm going frets five, seven, and nine on the E and the A strings. And then six, seven, and nine on the remaining strings. Now look, by knowing that scale off three different fingers, I've actually opened up that much of the fretboard. And actually when I'm there, there's another A here where I can play off the little finger and the second finger and the first finger. So you unlock the entire fretboard by knowing how to play any scale of three different fingers. Let's stick with A major for the next tip, which is to be able to play a scale across or along one string. This helps for lots of different reasons. You can play interesting melodies like that where you're sliding around, but also you can really very, very clearly see the pattern of a scale. So a major scale is made up of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. A tone, gap of one fret, and a semitone. It's just the very next fret. So you can very clearly see that relationship. Very good for your pattern recognition, but also for your ear. Your ear really learns the sound of these intervals. Related to tip one is to know every instance of a particular note on the entire fretboard, and it's not as difficult as you think. So we can do that with those octave patterns. Let's take A again as an example. If you think and ask yourself, how many times does an A occur on any particular string? It's not many times, it's twice on this bass. So look, there's an A. Know your fret markers, the double dot means an octave up from there. That's the only time those A's occur. When I'm there, I can instantly play an octave pattern to find the other A. 
and then I can do that backwards octave pattern to find that A. And then an octave up from there. These are all A's. Remembering that on every one string that note's only really occurring twice. If you've got a, a, a 24 fret bass it might be another time, it would be another time. All of those notes are A. Now set a metronome at a very slow speed and aim to hit the same note every time. I think it's a really good idea to understand notes in the first place and that comes from learning a piano keyboard. That's where the notes really came from in the first place. You look at this one, you got a bunch of white notes, a bunch of black notes, really easy. You start A and just goes up the musical alphabet till you hit G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G and the black notes are your sharps and your flats. Going up from a white note gives you a sharp, going down from a flat a white note gives you a flat. So you can, if you notice here, you can go up to a black note and also down from a white note so it's a sharp and a flat. So you've got to know both names. But here's an interesting position. Notice that between a B and a C and an E and an F there's no black note. Okay, That's exactly why on a bass guitar whenever you hit a B the very next fret is a C. Same instance when you hit an E the very next note is an F. Because on a piano white to black, black to white, white to black that's a semitone. And on a bass, every single fret is a semitone. So if you've ever wondered, why do some notes have sharps and flats and others don't? It's because of the piano. And if you work at it from that way, understand the notes on the piano first. I mean, I learned on the piano first, so it's second nature to me. But if you learn on a bass, you might be really confused as to why this is the case. I think if you learn this, it clears all of that up for you and it makes it really easy. Whenever you hit a B, next note to C and E, next note's an F. Otherwise, you have a gap of a fret between every single note. Then it's really, really easy. You can take G string, for example. Leave a gap between every, let's just do white notes on the piano, no black notes yet. Anytime you hit an E, next, note, next fret's an F, same with B. Really easy to find those notes once you understand the piano. Next tip's quite an easy one but it's just to play existing patterns in different parts of the neck. It's true to say that a lot of bass playing takes place down here and you don't really have to go up here, but if you want to express yourself fully, you do need to know the entire neck. And certainly a lot of great bass playing, think Victor Wooten, think Flea, you know, they are using the entirety of the neck. So just take a pattern you know already. So for example, I don't know if you... A minor pentatonic, so you're just going open string A, third fret A, and then open second, open second. The first note to the to the second note of the scale, you go up three frets. Do exactly the same thing here on the A on the fifth fret of the E string. That pattern, that pattern are the same. Move that one around. Basically, wherever there's an A, you can do this pattern. This works for any scale. The pattern will be the same. So you know that pattern. You know all those patterns. Suddenly, you've got a shape there, a shape there, and a shape there. They're all exactly the same, but you've, you've opened up the fretboard a little bit. This is a bit of a theory tip, but intervals are what really make up bass lines. There's a root a five, and it's just the number within a scale. The fifth note in the scale. And what you really want to be able to do is to map out an interval to a sound. So the fifth note, that root fifth movement happens so much on bass, in bass playing. So now an interval going upwards and downwards, ascending and descending. You get to a point where before you play it, you know A, the positioning of an interval, and B, the sound of it. So for example, a minor seventh, there's a Chili Peppers bass line. That's how I learned that minor seventh, that flat seventh, I know it now. There's that minor seventh to the to the major sixth. I know that sound. Minor third there. It's 
smoke on the water. Root minor third fourth. You can map out intervals using famous tunes and then put it on the bass and that will really help your ear. Learn a bit of theory. That's the next tip. I'm going to take a chord on the 12th fret. That's an A minor 7. So I've got fingers 2, 1 and 3 on frets 12, 10 and 12. I have a root, a minor 3rd and a minor 7th. Now that's a pattern, I can move that. I can move it around. But if you also know the difference between chord qualities, you can change things up really, really quickly. So for example, the difference between an A minor seven and a dominant seventh is this first finger just moving up one fret. Suddenly have a dominant chord. Move the third finger up one fret. I now have a major seventh. Make this little diagonal pattern here. I've got a root, a major third, and an augmented fifth. So if you understand the intervals, you understand a bit about theory, you can very quickly change up existing fretboard patterns to make different chords. And if you're not playing chords, you can play them individually to get arpeggios, triads, etc. Next is to split the bass up a little bit. So we talked about playing a scale across the neck that way, across a string, but cut the bass in half and, and make patterns up using perhaps two strings. You can make up lots of interesting different ways of playing that you're not really used to. So I'm going to play E natural minor, which I would normally play maybe on the seventh fret of the A string. Like that. All I did there was just play the same notes, but I pretended that I've got just a two string bass now. And that makes you play in different ways. You've got a bunch of different three note per string patterns. You can really easily see the first note and the last note within that little pattern there. It's a sixth. play in like different little cells and different boxes that you get. It definitely makes me play anyway in a slightly different way. Um, I was playing sort of a lead-ish kind of line there but you can make up bass lines using this idea too and you can use two strings on this side of the bass too, the E and the A rather than the D and the G. But split your bass up into different regions, different zones and see if that doesn't make you play in a different way. The final tip could be the most useful. I'm not sure I use this all the time. It's especially useful on a gig if a singer calls the next song suddenly in a different key because they're, they're tired and they want you to go down or up a key. Very, very easy to do on a bass because you can transpose. So that's mapping out a scale and its triads and chords. So let's do this on G. I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as I can. But here's a G major scale, a bit related to some of the other things I've been teaching you. Just playing on two strings. I'm going G, A, B, so frets three, five, seven. And then three, five, seven on the, the A string as well. That's a major key. And you get this lovely little pattern where on both strings, You've got the notes on the same frets, both on the third fret, then the fifth, and the, then the seventh. It's amazing how many songs are just playing different chords within a major key, and that's mapped out really easily. Let's think of some other ones. Uh, Just price tag it's going from the one chord to the three to the six to the four and i can see that so easily because i know the i've mapped it out one two three four five six if a musician calls out you know this tune's easy it's two five one you can see there's the two there's the five there's the one i've mapped it out Do 
little chromatic movement into the different chords. I'm just playing root notes mostly, but know that on every single one of these, another little bit of a theory tip here. I've done some theory tips, so make sure you look at that. I'll put a link to it. I know that the chord types there were minor, so I could just do the same shape. You can do this in different patterns. It doesn't have to be that three note per string pattern, but I find that that works really, really well. Also, you can do it in the minor key. Thanks a lot for watching that. I really hope you got something from that. I do two videos every week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's plenty of onlinebasecourses.com for you as well, so check that out. But if you do have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. See you next time.